Hey guys, um, it's Porik here. I, as promised, I said I would do a video on my LK35 pack and the things and the modifications I've made to this since I've had it. I've owned this bag for about, I'd say about almost a year now at this stage. Um, and I do, I do, I love it. Um, so I thought maybe I'd run through just some of the things that I've done to it. Um, again, most of them aren't kind of groundbreaking. I think most people have done these things in the past, you know, such as the side pouches and things. Um, so yeah, so let's get started and I'll run through what I've done to this pack. So, so <clears throat> I suppose first and foremost, just thought I'd do a brief kind of rundown on them. So if, for anybody who's watching this that doesn't have one of these or has, isn't familiar with them, um, these are, as I was saying earlier, just the LK35 uh, Swedish Army backpack. Um, they have been in issue, I think, up until, there's Tara, my, uh, my buddy. Um, yeah, these have been in issue f since or up until rather I should say the uh, the early 1990s and um, they were made by as far as I'm aware they're made by Haglofs or they were and most of them were made by Haglofs so I'm trying to do this with a uh, one hand so you have to excuse my fumbling around here and um, they were made by Haglofs and um, and actually if you you'll find as well that you can open the inside and on the inside here you'll find Sorry, I'll just pull this down. You can find the stamp. And mine, as far as I can see, is made in 1984. I'm pretty sure that's the year, and it's like not a serial number or anything like that. And um, so you can see, you know, Haglos logo here, this the Swedish tree crowns, and uh, the year it was made. So <clears throat> I suppose I'll move on to the back here, just to kind of run down some some of the bits. What I have on mine is a, a set from um, a Molly pack, the, which is the current issue American Army. So I found the, the straps on the original uh, LK35 pretty painful when you get it up to a, you know, a certain load. Um, so these are much more padded and there's also lots of kind of things that if you want to if you wanted to attach things and whatever um i can't remember how much I paid for these they weren't cheap i got them on ebay i think with the with the uh, postage and things like that i think they ended up coming to almost the price i paid for the pack to begin with and um, which is a bit annoying but they are definitely worth it also the kidney pad which is from the same the same kit this is also an american uh, American Army Molly issue, um, and it's it's only to show you these, which are kind of interesting. Um, so there's two loops here. I usually keep both of them on. Uh, these are the ones, the the smaller ones, that are the ones that uh, connect the pack to the frame, which is a stainless steel welded frame. Um, but the outside ones here, apparently I was looking it up and apparently it's for if you want to push the bag further away from you in terms of it being attached to the back of the frame. Um, so uh, for example, I've just taken these off at the ends just so I can show you. But the um, the attachments, so what you do is you would attach the, the bag in here. You know, you do the same on the other side. Um, so there's a lot of leeway here and you can have the pack pretty far away from the frame if you want to. And I think, at least from my research anyway, these extra longer toggles at the top are for for that, for pushing the frame out a little bit further so you can kind of store things in the back here. Um, so I'll actually, I'll just take off the frame here so I can show you um, how I put on my straps. So. It's a bit mad looking without the uh, without the bag on it. But this is the frame, and um, as you can see, there's lo there's lots of extra kind of stuff like this stuff from um, from the original pack that I've just kind of tried to tie and tuck in and make it look as neat as possible. But the straps themselves have an extra sort of back padding on them, which I've originally the original LK35 came with two of these. 
and so I removed one which was sitting down under here where the where the kidney pad now sits and I've moved the one that was on the top to the middle just to give that extra bit of padding and then obviously these here so <clears throat> the frame is interesting in the sense that it's quite versatile and I've seen people attach all sorts of stuff to them putting you know the smaller pack at the top that only goes up to you know that might only uh might only go up to say here and then you've got like you know room for your sleeping bag and things like that on my frame here i've attached a number of things so i have for example just a little uh pouch here that is attached with velcro and that's like a dump sack for you know anything that i might find out in the woods that i want to keep or you know maybe foraging and things like that so it's quite a big little sack and it doesn't doesn't get in the way or anything so i usually keep that there's no weight on it i've also on this side i've got a couple of uh, paracord bracelets and a carabiner um, and down here i also have another one which ha actually has and um, this has fire cord in it so within this orange uh within this orange part of the paracord bracelet is um basically one of the strands has a wick a kind of a waxed uh wick running throughout it all the way through the, the strand so you can use that as a piece of uh you know emergency um tinder or anything like that if you if you so need it it's also good for you know kind of you know if you want to put your axe in there and things like that and um, so that's the frame that's as i said that's the the way i have it set up and um, the pack itself so it might be a bit awkward now i have let's see sorry now very unprofessional job i apologize um, actually, you know, I'm going to put this on my head because it's probably easier to uh, to use. Well, I hope I can get all this in. <clears throat> so, that's the back of the pack now without without the frame on it. As I said, these are, these are quite long. Um, so, you know, the option to have your pack quite, you know, well, actually, these are from the, these are from that part. This and this are what attach to the, uh, to the frame and you can have it quite far out on the front obviously it's basically just a big dump pack you know there's no kind of special compartments and i usually keep a dry a, a dry bag inside mine so this is i think it's a 50 liter dry bag and uh, i think it's got a got a bivy in there at the moment and a thermoris but basically i'll keep that in there as an extra kind of layer of of um an extra layer of waterproofness to the bag. Um, I have never really had it in really heavy rain, but at saying, saying that, I've never actually uh, gotten anything really wet either, so um, I've never really had an issue with it. This is the cotton canvas version, so it's a 1000D uh, cotton. They also It also comes in a, a nylon, or sorry, a, a Cordura version. I believe they were the later issue ones. So my one, judging from the date, as I said, is from 1984. So the um, I'm not sure when the Cordura ones replaced these cotton ones, but I had the option of picking one or the other, and I kind of went with this. I prefer the aesthetic of this, and I think uh, canvas and cotton canvas can usually last uh, longer than Cordura can. The other, the downside of that, I suppose, is that. Um, Cordura is, I believe, more waterproof. Um, so, you know, you can make that trade, whichever, you, you know, as I said, I prefer the more traditional uh, canvas look. Um, but you can get the Cordura ones. Like, I believe this is the this is Cordura. So, technically, these these are from, um, well, I'll, you know, I'll talk about them in a minute. <clears throat> so, inside, you've got room for a hydration pack like a, a camelback i just use use it to keep some uh, some dry some just some emergency uh waterproof trousers and what else have i got in here just notebook and some velcro this velcro i've used in the past with again attached to the sides up here and use put my axe on this side if i don't want to put it on the front and what i've 
done in the past obviously is as well use this for the axe and you know obviously you can tie this down i believe this was probably traditionally used for a shawl fold up shawl and um, but i use it for my axe so that's the kit or that's the pack inside again there's, there's nothing fan kind of fancy about it um, the side pouches i suppose i can talk about now um, these are from the webbing kit the swedish army webbing kit as in i think these are cordura they're, they're not canvas anyway um, I bought them on Military Mart um, and yes the shipping costs are ridiculous with those guys um, probably paid at least as at least the amount I paid for the for the things themselves uh, with with a uh, with delivery costs and things like that but you know it's just something I kind of wanted to put onto them uh, to stitch it on it was an absolute pain in the ass. Took me like a couple of about three nights of solid work just kind of getting in and <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it very well, but I've I've stitched into the actual um not on not on this part, but on the actual inside here, uh, into the pack. And the way in which I have stitched this, so I'll go forward, then I'll go back halfway, then go back double again back halfway double again back halfway so you're kind of you're kind of doing this sort of motion um and that will give it almost like the a, a double amount of strength so you're essentially double stitching them um the uh the thread i used was this stuff which is um what's the name of this company it's a guterman these are really this is this is upholstery thread so it's used for leather work and fabric and you know things like that so it's really strong and i'd recommend you you kind of pick this up rather than just using um you know the type of thread you might find at home in your average kind of pound shop sewing kit it's not going to last and you'll be doubling up on the work for yourself um so i'd recommend you picking up some heavy duty uh uh thread it's definitely worth it this is the needle I used and um, it's sort of it's got like a kind of a I suppose it's almost like an arrowhead in the sense I, I believe it's used for burlap and canvas or that's its intended use I don't know if it's in focus there but it's got sort of a an edge that comes out there and you kind of need that when you're going through this stuff because it's quite heavy heavy to, to actually punch through so that's how I stitched them on and um, they are quite big I mean I'm I can fit on this side. I have get this fell out. Sorry, I'll just put this in my head again. Excuse me. So this was uh, this is my uh, cooking kit. Well, I suppose my canteen. Um, I made this myself out of an old um, barista's apron that I found in a charity shop, and I just um, you know use power cord and things like that. Um, but that fits. It's the Pathfinder 32 ounce um, canteen, and I've also got the the cup in there as well. Um, but that fits in the side of this. Um, and in terms of I suppose saving space, I mean I'll use this to store all sorts of stuff when I'm getting out there. You know, like cleaning stuff. Got my torch in there. Uh, I got. I think I have some. You know some sporks and things like that so so in terms of because the pack is just almost like a dump pack with these two small pockets that i've added on the side there's very little uh ease of compartmentalizing your stuff which is a bit of a pain in the ass for some people that like to be organized and um, so that is one advantage of you know having this where you kind of know that you've got all your cooking stuff in this in this and then in the side so all your cooking can go in one part rather than it going somewhere in the pack um, another thing I've done as well is when I was stitching these on I actually left the top open um, and that allows you to kind of put other things in there so I've just got a little hand folding uh, shovel in there um, so it kind of almost gives you an extra little pocket now it doesn't they don't work so well when you've got the pack really bulked out and you've got it full to the brim um, but it's handy to have those there if you need like just something just you know narrow things that you can slip down like a you know just something in here what is it 
it's I don't know probably notes from some something I don't know um so that's the that's what I've done to my pack um and it's worked out really well for me I'm really happy with it I do wish I had a slight bit more room in it um another 10 liters would be great but at the, in that sense the bag gets heavy enough as it is anyway so I probably I'm probably better off and um, I just wanted to quickly as well talk about the I had these up on the page during the week and people were kind of showing interest in them these are the as far as I know so let's move this one out of the way this is the M39 uh, Swiss mountaineering pack which I was kind of up for swapping on on on, uh, on the page um, it's kind of hard to so you know what I'll do I'll fill this up and I'll uh, I'll get back just so you can see the see it in in a little better detail so just give me one second so here is the M39 Swiss mountain pack uh, I've put my uh, baby bag in here just to kind of bulk it out but so you can get a sense of the the kind of the, the size of it I think these are 50 liter so they are slightly bigger in term, down, down, than our LK35 here. Um, there's room on the front. I think this is traditionally used to store your helmet. Um, you know, I've used it for my sleeping bag and things like that. And it, it comes apart pretty easily. Um, and then you've got two outside straps. Um, and then on the inside then you've got more kind of clips and buckles. So it's, it's quite uh, watertight. Um, as I said, it's made from rubber, waterproof rubber, so the kit's not getting getting wet in here. Another advantage is that you can you can overstuff this thing quite significantly. Uh, it's got this big sort of inside uh, extra level of kind of uh, like a waterproof thing here, and then within there you've got your you've got your compartment, and um, it's got side pockets as well. Two side pockets. These are much narrower. Than the uh, than the LK or than the rather the LK thirty five ones here, um. But they are good. It's a good bag. And what I've done in the past, speaking of modifications to this guy, what I've done in the past is I've taken two of these bags. I had as I was saying to the guys on the page, I, I accidentally ordered five of them instead of one, um, because the website was in Polish and I don't speak Polish and I. Accidentally ordered five, but anyway, you know, lesson learned. Uh, so what I've done in the past is I've actually attached two of these to the LK35 frame. It comes to about, the first one comes to about here and the second one comes quite a bit over, but it kind of gives you, leaves you with about 100 litres. Um, I've used carabiners and I've kind of wrapped these around the frame and things. Um, and that is one of the great advantages of the LK35 frame is its versatility and your ability to be able to kind of uh, modify it as you as you might want to. So as I said, these bags, I mean, I was talking to some of the guys on the page about selling them and trading them. Um, they're still here. I haven't heard back from you guys. Um, let me know what the crack is anyway. But yeah, so that is just one advantage or one example of when I have modified the LK35 frame with something like this. Um, so overall, I'm, I'm super happy with this pack. I, it's one of my favorite, probably my favorite piece of kit, kit. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it informed anybody that was wondering about this pack and if, apologies for it, the rambling and the shaky camera. Um, but yeah, so feel free to comment or uh, if you have any questions, just let me know and I can answer them as best I can. So thanks, guys.